Blake Snell remains in the NL West. It's not the Dodgers. It's not the Padres. It's the Giants. Why that doesn't matter for the division and why we aren't too worried about it right now. That's what's coming up. So let's get locked on Dodgers. You are locked on Dodgers. Your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Yo, 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 Dodger fans. Welcome to Locked On Dodgers. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, the number one local sports daily podcast network. Locked On, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code locked on MLB, all lowercase, for a first deposit match up to $100. This is the daily podcast covering the Los Angeles Dodgers, bringing you the smart fans' perspective on our boys in blue. You can find us where we find podcasts and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked On Dodgers. And you become can become an everydayer by listening or watching every day, which can be made easier by subscribing and getting notified when our episodes are ready. If this is your first time listening or watching, welcome. I'm Vince Sampaio, joined by my co-host Jeff Snyder. Jeff and I are both lifelong Dodger fans that have watched a lot of Dodger games. We've covered uh our fair amount of Dodger games. We've been doing this podcast now for almost five years on the dot. And we've been doing the podcast together from on the Dodgers even longer than that. So we're not quite insiders. We're just here to bring you what we believe is a smart and rational thinking about the Dodgers, making you and us better Dodger fans in the process. And uh, we're here to do that once again today. Although the lead news isn't directly related to the Dodgers, but it is indirectly re- related to the Dodgers. Blake Snell, the wait is over. He's finally signed. John Heyman broke the news. It was confirmed later by others uh, that two years, $62 million, $31 million a year, can opt out after next season. Uh, it continues the trend of these type of pillow deals that Boris clients have had to get. And, yeah, Jeff, he, he stays in the NOS. He joins Logan Webb atop that. Now the number one and two finishers in the NL Cy Young are now on the same team in the Dodgers division. I guess first we'll kind of go through, you know, what you thought when you saw the news, what you think of the deal and everything else. And then we'll talk about does it really affect the Dodgers uh, as it pertains to the NL West. Yeah, I guess I need to quibble with one thing. I think the top news of the day is it's Clayton Kershaw's 36th birthday today on March 19th. We're dropping this tonight on March 18th, but it's the March 19th episode. Technically hard to quibble. It's Clayton Kershaw's birthday. That's always the top news. Uh, but yeah, Blake Snell. When we're as long as we're going to talk about him, you know, somebody a lefty not as good as Clayton Kershaw. That's Blake Snell. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a good deal for the Giants. Um, I would not be heartbroken at all if the Dodgers had signed Blake Snell to this deal. Um, the big concern about Snell was always the durability, the longevity, all of that stuff, and so a two year deal. With an opt out, it's you know we we always talk about there's no such thing as a bad one year deal. Uh, a two year deal with an opt out is almost as as foolproof. And so yeah, it's a good deal for the for the Giants and for Blake Snell. With what this off season has been, you know, gives him the opportunity if he wants to to hit free agency again next year. When maybe there's more certainty among teams as far as the regional sports networks and all that other stuff, and so maybe. The money is flowing more freely next off season, uh, and it gives Snell a chance to hit the market again. So uh, obviously, it's not the deal that Snell wanted, but it's probably a pretty good deal for both sides. Snell gets a lot of money, and the Giants get uh, a really good pitcher on a on a short commitment. Yeah, thirty one million a year, nothing to scoff at. Again, the longevity is where it comes into play. Uh, interesting way uh, of the structure is that he gets uh, 15 mil this year, and then he would get all the money next year of the 31 mil. Then in 2026, he has a signing bonus or something like that of 17 mil. So he guarantees himself to get paid uh, in 2026, even if it doesn't quite work out for him. It's one of those where the Giants are hoping, not not in the sense directly of hoping that he opts out, but If he opts out, that means he pitched well, and the Giants would obviously want him to pitch well if it's going to just be a one-year thing. 
Well, let's break it down for the NLS. Like I mentioned, the one and two in the Cy Young, uh, Blake Snell, Logan Webb, now top the Dodge, uh, Giants rotation. They've had a pretty decent overall you know, winter now. They got Matt Chapman, Jorge Soler, Jung Ho Lee, uh, a couple others, and looking like a very good potential second place team still, right, Jeff? Yeah. It, and, you know, the, the D backs are going to be tough, but yeah, the Giants are going to be battling for second place for sure. I, I think you can make a pretty good case that they had the second best off season of any team in baseball. Um, I mean, the, the Yankees traded for Juan Soto and that move all by itself is huge. Uh, the Orioles traded for Corbin Burns, which is huge, but that's basically all that they did. And so um, partly because they don't need to do that much because they, they have a very young core. Um, but yeah, I mean, you look at the guys that the giants added and subtracted, it has been a really good off season for them. Uh, but their top two priorities were Otani and Yamamoto, and both of those guys went to the Giants' top rivals. And so it's, uh, you know, our buddy Ben Kaspik from Locked On Giants said the Giants get an A for this offseason. It would be an A plus if they hadn't lost their top two targets to the hated rivals. So, you know, that's that's kind of kind of the way I see it. The Giants have had a really good offseason, and I, I expect them to be a solid team. Like I think they could make a run for 90 wins. And, and that would be, that'd be like really other than the Rockies, the, the national league West could be a pretty darn good division this year. Yeah. Considering that the NL central is not expected to be that great. Uh, the AL East is basically a, a two, a two horse race now. So we could see three teams from the NL West in, in the playoffs. And that's kind of where the Blake Snell signing would affect the Dodgers the most in a potential series against the giants. Like I mentioned, Logan Webb, Blake Snell. The, Do the Dodgers have seemingly figured out Webb a little bit uh, after that 2021 season where he kind of dominated them and into the postseason. Snell, they haven't quite fully figured out, but, you know, it's a little bit different offense, a little bit different team this year. But you just, you know, at least I, I don't know if you felt this, but, you know, the a quick trigger of a little – NLDS, NL West, PTSD action, two really good pitchers at the top of a rotation, kind of taking out the Dodgers in a short series. But again, if it, it, it really goes down to, yeah, the Snell and, and Webb are, are solid. Uh, you know, if Harrison steps up, if Robbie Ray comes back healthy, you know, they could have a couple other lefties in there that, that are, that are good enough to, to compete. But when I look at their lineup, it still doesn't compare to the Dodgers lineup at all. And, and really, that's where the Dodgers are going to have to, you know, win in October is, is you know, pitching and defense is, is the kind of the cliche. But uh, if, if you watch this podcast at all, when it comes to October, you know me and it's all about the offense and uh, offense putting up runs. And that's when it's going to matter. And I don't think that they should be outscored at all if it goes compared to the Giants. Yeah, baseball is the same sport in October that it is the rest of the season. Uh, you know, it's a little bit harder sometimes to, to do different things, but the same sport in that the way you win is by scoring more runs than your opponents. And you can do that by out slugging or by shutting them out. Uh, but what we've seen specifically from Blake Snell is that he can pitch really well and hold the Dodgers down and the Dodgers will still win three to one to win the world series, you know? And, and so uh, it's, yeah, like uh, I, I don't love when the Dodgers face Blake Snell, but I, it doesn't really scare me. And I don't think I'd be any more scared of facing Blake Snell in a postseason series than any other good pitcher. Uh, just because like you said, the, we have the PTSD of Dodger fans and Dodgers offense in the postseason. Uh, that's going to be there no matter who they're facing. And it's just as possible that they could bust out against Snell in the postseason is that they, he could shut them down. Yeah. So uh, I think that's really all there is on the Snell front. Like, you know, recap, not worried about the division could maybe be worried in the postseason, but uh, you know, a lot of other pitchers would worry me in the postseason too, just by nature of, of uh, you know, the beast. So yeah, that's how it goes. Uh, there was some talk from the Dodgers, domestic opening day uh, opponent uh, and the opening day starting pitcher, the the, the Cardinals announced. And uh, he had some interesting words that maybe reaffirmed what Mookie said at FanFest. So we're going to talk about that. So make sure to keep it locked on Dodgers. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. You can now win it to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. 
You can turn $10 into $1,000 with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. If you want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like Meek Mill and Sugar Sean O'Malley, then you can do so. And you can find the community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. And Prize Picks even offers injury insurance so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. So for basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half, does not return the second, that player projection won't count against you and the rest of your entry saves lives. So if you had entries for the Laker game the other night, uh, Anthony Davis, if you had him, it uh, wouldn't have mattered because he came out of the game after the first quarter. So Price Picks can help you out in that sense. Price Picks is easy. All you got to do is pick more or less. And if you look at the slate of NBA games tomorrow, you look at Dallas versus San Antonio, you have points plus rebounds plus assists for Victor Wembanyama. The rookie sensation is at 39.5. Do you think he will have more than 39.5 total points, rebounds, and assists? Then you go more. Luka Doncic is at 53.5 for the same category, more or less. Kyrie Irving, 35.5, more or less. And then uh, we'll pick one more guy, Trey Jones, 21.5, so pretty low. So those four picks, you could get 100 times your money. So go check out Price Picks right now. And if you go download the app and use the code locked on MLB, you'll get a first deposit match up to $100. That's download the app, use code locked on MLB in all lowercase, and get a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. I want to thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen of the day. Make sure to find us wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. And remember, March 20th on Locked On Sports Today, the 24-7 national sports streaming channel from the Locked On Podcast Network. March 20th, 7 p.m. Eastern, the best MLB season preview is coming exclusively to Locked On Sports Today. You'll get local insight from MLB local experts on the Locked On Podcast Network. That's March 20th, 7 p.m. Eastern, Locked On Sports Today on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All right, Jeff. Um Miles Mikolas, who is had been named the starting pitcher for opening day at Dodger Stadium, had an interesting quote over the weekend about playing the Dodgers in that first series. And he said, quote, we're not exactly a low payroll team, but you got the Dodgers playing checkbook baseball. We're going to be the hardest working group of Midwestern farmers we can be. It would be great to stick it to the Dodgers. There's a lot of ways to break down this code and, and have a discussion about it, but it, uh, I think, reaffirms, like I said, a little bit of what Mookie Betts said, where teams want to beat the Dodgers, and you know, maybe World Series uh, was a little bit of hyperbole on Mookie's end, but maybe not. Yeah, uh, Michaelis is definitely right about one thing. The Cardinals definitely aren't a low payroll team. They are 10th in baseball and payroll. The Dodgers are 9th. Uh, so, you know, they're – Roughly, uh, roughly the same. Um, you know, the the difference is uh, the Dodgers spent a lot this off season. Uh, it is it, it's kind of interesting to hear a member of the players' union complaining about a team spending money on players. Uh, you would think after this off season with free agency the way it's been, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Miles Michaelis has gotten a phone call from Tony Clark or one of his minions by now saying, "Hey, uh." How about you shut up and be a better union member? Uh, but, you know, either way, yeah, it, it definitely is uh, reinforcing Mookie Betts' point. Like, Miles Michaelis, it's opening day. It, it doesn't actually need any more hype than it has. And yet, Miles Michaelis felt the need to uh, to hype it up some more to be, you know, pit th themselves as the Midwestern farmers from that tiny podunk town of St. Louis, Missouri. Um you know, uh, population, what, 5 million, uh, probably what the, the top five or six market size in major league baseball. Uh, I hate to tell you this. I know there's farms in Missouri. They ain't in St. Louis. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's silly, uh, and it doesn't matter. And it's fun for me. Uh, it will make it more fun for me when I watch Ollie Marmol come out and take miles Michaelis out of the game with one out in the fourth inning and his line of three and a third innings pitch, seven earned runs. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe between now and then, Dodger fans can uh, come up with some proper way to uh, send him to the showers 
uh, the way that they did with Madison Bungrunner after the go get it out of the ocean incident. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't, uh, maybe John Devers, thank God I'm a country boy. Uh, that's, you know, close maybe, uh, next time you're talking, instead of listening to you, I'll be thinking about other songs that, that, uh, Dieter rule could, or that, uh, DJ severe could throw up for us to, uh, to honor the Midwestern, what Midwestern farm boy, uh, of miles Michaelis from the tiny town of Jupiter, Florida. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I said, it's just funny, you know, the, 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 I guess the narrative that's been created and everything else. But when you look at it, and you look at specifically the starting pitchers on opening day, Miles Michaelis, Michaelis, however you say it, is making more money than Tyler Glass now this year. Um, at least by well, yeah, I, I, unless there's some signing bonuses in his, but he's making about 18 million a year this year specifically. Glass is making 17 million a year, so he's going to make more than the than the big pitcher that the Dodgers have. Uh, and he's going to make more than, you know, a lot of the guys in the Dodgers starting lineup that day. He's going to make more than Jason Hayward, James Outman, Gavin Lux. Uh, you know, not more than, than Mookie. He's making more than Shohei Otani based on salary. So it, it, it's just funny to see. And I don't know. I really only saw this quote one other place. A couple of, you know, other places used it. It must have been maybe an exclusive interview. I want to know kind of what the exact question was that got that answer out of him. And, you know, it's clearly it's something he's been thinking about. And. You know, it's interesting to think like, okay, you know, how many other players in that locker room were feeling that way? And, and it's really funny for the Cardinals because they went out and spent some money this offseason. And other than Sonny Gray, they, you know, and even Sonny Gray's up there in age, but they went after a lot of guys that are a little bit up there in age, Lance Lynn and, and others. And they're one of the oldest teams in the league. And it's like, you know, you're, you guys could have had Blake Snell. You guys could have had all these other guys that have been signed um, if uh, positions of need, and it didn't happen. And, you know, to, to call the Dodgers checkbook baseball when, yeah, they spent a lot of money, but they're able to, you know, one, afford it. Two, they're able to have it be sustainable because of the farm system they've had and everything else is just, you know, it's just funny. Yeah, and they spent their money on good players. Like, uh, it, it's it's likely to work out pretty well for them. Checkbook baseball, I think, more like what Steve Cohen did with the Mets, where sign everybody you can think of, and then you know hope that things come together and it works. I think the Dodgers are uh, they did a pretty smart job of it. Uh, I was thinking there's also uh, Amarillo Sky by Jason Aldean. Uh, there's she thinks my tractor's sexy by Kenny Chesney. That could be a good one. There, there's a, one of my favorites would be Rain on the Scarecrow, Blood on the Plow by John Cougar Mellencamp, except for the fact that I think I'm the only person in the world who knows that song. Uh, but I would love it. So if DJ Severe is watching this, uh, maybe you play that when Miles Michaelis comes out. Uh, Rain on the Scarecrow, Blood on the Plow. It's a good song and uh, definitely would be appropriate for a, a sad, sad farmer boy walking off the mound and under the bright lights, big city of Los Angeles. Yeah, so there, there's a lot. I don't think the Dodgers are going to use this as any type of fuel. They already have already played two games uh, before, you know, two actual games before they even get to this point. I don't think it really matters. They don't need bullets and board material, especially in the regular season. But if, you know, the Dodger fans are usually pretty good at seeing some of this stuff and, and reacting to it in the game. They've, you know, done little boos here and there for when guys have said stuff in the past. So we'll see how the Dodger fans treat them. Uh, but hopefully the Dodgers shoot them even worse and, uh, you know, keep them out of the second inning maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's always the goal is you always let your your bats do the talking. And when a pitcher talks trash, and that's what they did with Bumgarner after the go-get-it-out-of-the-ocean incident, next time he pitched at Dodger Stadium, the Dodgers knocked him out of the game early, uh, and it was it was a beautiful thing. And that's always my I – don't, I don't care about baseball beefs. I don't like beanball wars. I don't like any of that stuff. I just like – when somebody says something dumb, I want the Dodgers to punish him by knocking him around for a bunch of runs in a short amount of time and you know, and then let DJ Severe maybe play a song about it. You don't like non beanball war beefs? Not not overly, honestly. I I uh you give me give me an example. You have an example of one? Um I can't think well. Garrett Cole and like uh what Josh Donaldson, that was a sticky stuff. They didn't ever hit each other. 
Um, that I can't think of other, but there's been others I would imagine. Yeah, but, I, I I don't necessarily dislike. They don't do anything for me. Um, or last year with the the whole whatever the player said in the locker room that uh, the suspect, the barbecue guy, reported, and then that became the rallying cry for the Phillies. Oh yeah, I can't. Oh, about thanks, thanks, Bryce yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I, I don't know. I, I watch baseball to be entertained by baseball. Uh, I, I don't like those things are fine, but I don't, I don't need them for me. That's uh, why you're the we're the different demographics of the baseball world. That's yeah, why baseball I, doesn't catch up with some of these other sports. They need more beefs. Yeah, I guess, but I, I'd rather just have people ever, just recognize that baseball is the greatest sport in the world and watch it because of that. You know, That's not how it works with. Apparently, I need beef. All right, uh, Walker Bueller. He's not going to be on the Dodgers opening day roster. We know that he's supposed to pitch this year. He pitched the other day and touched 97 miles an hour. So that gets us excited and it gets us thinking about this season and beyond. So make sure to keep it locked on Dodgers. Today's episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Amazon Fire TV is very clutch. Anything you can possibly think of, you can probably get from Amazon Fire TV, and it works well with smart TVs. You can get the little Fire TV stick that you can plug into your TV, and you can take that anywhere with you. And you get millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV and Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels that deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. You get all the game analysis, highlights, and more. And not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel as well. So check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. And if you haven't checked them out, trust me, you should go check them out. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. Today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. I would recommend, even in a year where March Madness is probably going to be wild because nobody really knows who's good or not, put down 5 bucks on a 16 16- or the one seed to be the 16 seed and get your $200 in bonus bets. And then you can have fun with that $200. So 200 bucks used on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. I don't have a pick for you for that because like I said, I, I don't know who is good this year. I know Long Beach state is in it and they are a 15 seed. I wouldn't put $5 on them as much as uh, I support my, my, my former school. So go to fanduelcom slash lockdown and bet on college hoops until they cut down the net. want to thank you for being an everydayer. If you're not an everydayer, all you have to do is listen or watch every day. And you can make that easier by subscribing and be notified when episodes are ready. You can also go beyond the podcast and become a Locked On Dodgers insider at jointsubtext.com slash Locked On Dodgers. You can get news and updates and thoughts from us on anything that happens in the Dodger world. You can also text us directly and get any questions you have answered or have priority for mailbag episodes and more. Once the season starts and I'm there at Dodger Stadium, uh, you know, any exclusive videos or photos I can get that can, I can share with you guys, I'll make sure to do so. So go to jointsubtext.com slash Lockdown Dodgers and become a Lockdown Dodgers insider. All right, Jeff. So Walker Bueller has his uh, weekly, I don't know if it's still weekly, but he, he checks in with the Just Baseball show. And this week, one of the quotes that stood out is uh, how well his bullpen went the other day, how well his throwing went. He said he touched 97 miles an hour. That's not a number. We had seen mid-90s in one of his uh, bullpens a couple weeks ago. This one, 97. That's a little bit different. That's a little bit more Walker Buehler that that we've seen in the past. Uh, Gets you excited, not only for this season, but also, you know, he is going into a contract year. So what can kind of move forward? And I know we had, I think, a question from someone that, that kind of explores that a little bit too. Um, Sorry, I was muted. We actually had a lot of comments uh, or back and forth on in the YouTube comments on yesterday's episode about, you know, because we were talking about Kyle Hurt and his potential future as a starting pitcher for the Dodgers. Um, and that brought up the fact that the Dodgers 
kind of have a lot of options for next year. Just, I mean, currently under contract, you have Shohei Otani and Tyler Glasnow and Bobby Miller and Emmett Sheehan and Gavin Stone and Michael Grove and Kyle Hurt and, you know, Nick Frosso and Landon Knack and River Ryan. Plus you have Clayton Kershaw with a t- uh, player option for next year. You have the potential of them going after uh, Roki Sasaki if he gets posted from Japan. You have Tony Gonsolin and Dustin May coming back from Tommy John surgery. I mean, that's that's 14 guys right there. And that's without mentioning Walker Buehler, who's a free agent at the end of this year. And so... And without it, Roki Sasaki. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so there, there's so many options there. And it makes you wonder, like... I, I don't know. It, it seems unlikely. Like as much as I love Walker Bueller, and it seems unlikely he's going to be back with the Dodgers because you look at all these other options and what he's likely to command on the free agent market, especially if he bounces back and pitches well this year. Uh, it's you know, and and maybe maybe the demands won't be there. Maybe the free agent market will still be weird like it was this this year. But uh, when you do have the option, if Roki Sasaki does get posted, he's going to be making you know, very roughly the league minimum. Uh, it's going to be more of a, a signing bonus thing. And if, uh, you know, Tony Gonsolin and Dustin Mayer back, they're making uh, not league minimum, but much less than Walker Buehler is going to make in free agency. All those young guys uh, from Sheehan and Miller and Stone and uh, the guys who haven't even debuted in the big leagues yet, those guys are all going to be close to the league minimum. And so just from a a practicality standpoint, when you do have Glasnow and Yamamoto and Otani, I think I forgot to mention Yamamoto in the first one. So maybe that's 15 guys without Bueller um, that you have the, the three high paid guys already. I don't know that it would make sense to add Bueller as another high paid starter when you have all these low paid guys available. Yeah, obviously it would depend. Like if Walker Bueller does something in October and continues that, being that guy for the Dodgers, then it's a little bit more of a consideration. If you just, you know, take it on its head and okay, he's going to pitch the rest of this season and, you know, whatever happens in October happens, then yeah, it it probably, you know, doesn't make the most sense. This is kind of what I mentioned yesterday with when we talked about Kyle Hurt and just make him a reliever at this point, because realistically, like there's so much he needs to happen and, and not that he can't be a good starter, not that he can't, you know, pass up some of these guys that are that are ahead of them right now but for the Dodgers asset management and everything else like it makes sense that some of these guys just honestly become relievers and you go for a really good bullpen and really good starting rotation you know it when Dustin May comes back this year probably for sure he wouldn't be anything more than a multi-inning reliever but even into the future you kind of have to think like you know is it better serve for him to be a reliever and and you know kind of move forward in, in that regard so yeah, there, there's a lot of questions. Obviously, it's going to depend a lot on what happens this year, what happens, you know, Clayton Kershaw will be on this year too, and, you know, if there's any other injuries and everything else. But it does seem like at the very least if Walker Bueller comes back and pitches well this year, the only way he might come back is if the Dodgers stick to him with the qualifying offer and he ends up taking that. But with hopefully more money for his sake and for other free agents' sake – with Blake Snell realistically probably back on the market with Corbin Burns on the market, you know, some other guys that are going to come into the market. Uh, yeah, it, it's a very big season for Bueller for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. And, and it's tempting as a Dodger fan to say the Dodgers shouldn't worry about the money. They should just sign whoever's going to be the best. So if Bueller is going to be better than Emmett Sheehan, then he should be in the rotation over him, you know? Um, but the way a team like the Dodgers does sustain the success that they have is by doing some of that balancing. You know, they've, they've always been willing to spend, but that spending has always been offset by a core group of young players. And so, you know, they had Corey Seager and Cody Bellinger having monster seasons while making close to the league minimum. They had, uh, you know, a bunch of guys like that, the the contributions that they've gotten from Walker Buehler so far have almost all come when he was making very little money. Uh, Dustin May and Tony Gonsolin too, you know, and, and then you do supplement it with some low paid free agents like Tyler Anderson and Andrew Heaney and guys like that. 
Uh, but you know, it really is, there's always been a really good balance. And I think, I think that's probably a priority for them of maintaining that, that balance. And so when you do already have so many big names under contract, and, and not that the Dodgers are going to punt future off seasons because of what they did this off season, but what they've done this off season is make some of their future off season needs much less. And, you know, because they have DH locked up, we, they have, you know, Yamamoto and Glasnow, that's two starting pitching spots. Like there's a lot of teams in baseball that would love to know we are going to have at least two good, really good high paid starting pitchers for the next four years or whatever. Um, and the Dodgers have that. Plus they have Bobby Miller, who is going to be that balance, you know? And so if they could, and Otani. yeah, yeah. And, and Otani coming back to pitch, you know, that that's the, the Dodgers have, I mean, that four right there, I, I would guess 20, 22 teams in baseball would kill to have that core four of Yamamoto, Glasnow, Otani, and Bobby Miller in the rotation. And then you look at the other 10 guys fighting for one last spot. I mean, if they sign Roki Sasaki, it's like, well, is that the rotation? Or then maybe they have to then with three Japanese starters, maybe they just have to go to a six man rotation at that point, uh, just for the sake of, we, we have all these pitchers. Um, but yeah, you know, that, that is how we end up in conversations like the Cal hurt one, maybe just make him a reliever or you think, well, do we keep him as a starter to maximize his trade value? If we don't see a fit for him long-term, not necessarily Cal hurt, but you know, some of these younger starters, they may end up being like, you, you could picture a world where river Ryan, as good as I think he's going to be, maybe he ends up being traded for like headlining a big deal, either for some good prospects from another team or, you know, uh, filling a major league need. And, and then it, the talk would be, well, the Dodgers turned Matt Beatty into, you know, whatever it ends up being that they get for River Ryan. Uh, but, you know, yeah, it, it's some of these prospects are probably going to end up traded. And, you know, it, it's just hard to see where Walker Bueller is going to fit. As much as I love Bueller and love would love for him to fit into the Dodgers forever. I think the only way that would happen is if he came to the Dodgers this season and said, how about we do a four year extension at 12 million bucks a year, you know, uh, which would be crazy. It's not going to happen. Um, but that might be the only way that it makes sense for the Dodgers to, to re-sign him. Yeah. I mean, it's a good time to be a Dodger fan, but also, to, and we've seen a lot of guys leave the last few years and, uh, we've seen one guy come back with Kike and, you know, I'm assuming we'll see Justin Turner eventually come back uh, as not as a player, but, you know, maybe as a coach or something like that. So it, it's tough to have that many good players, but it's uh, not a bad problem to have. So, yeah. All right, Jeff, you got anything else? Uh, just one more thing. When you were reading the ad for the fire TV, I remembered I have this picture I'm posting on, if you're watching on YouTube, this is from my son's B reel on Thursday when we were driving down to Arizona that's the back of my head. I'm driving the Suburban, and that's my boys watching Stranger Things on the Fire TV stick uh, in the car. It's a, it's a cool little thing. So I know this isn't an ad anymore, but uh, just want to let you know, I, when I say we use this thing, we really do, and it's really, really cool. There you go. All right, that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for making Lockdown Dodgers your first listen. Make sure to find us wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. Make sure to become an everyday or by listening or watching every day. Go beyond the podcast and become a Locked On Dodgers insider at jointsubtext.com slash Locked On Dodgers and text directly with us. Locked On Sports Today and Locked On Sports Los Angeles are two 24-7 streaming channels on YouTube by the Locked On Podcast Network where you can get the news and stories from the sports world and the LA sports world. You can also find us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Locked On Dodgers. Jeff's on Twitter at Snydog. I'm at Vincent's 91 can also get a hold of us via email, lockdowndodgers at gmail.com or via voicemail text at 323-863-5625. We're here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be here with us when you get in your car or if you're at home. Terry Smart Advice Play Podcast, Lockdown Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. Have a good one. We'll talk to you tomorrow, and happy birthday, Clayton Kershaw.